Hey, my name is Bailey Weiser. I am the owner of Hell Dude Photography, a North Georgia newborn and family photography studio, and welcome to my channel. Today, we're gonna go back to the beginning and talk basics of the things that you need, in my opinion, to start out in newborn photography. So whether you are a brand new photographer looking to get into newborn photography, or you're a seasoned photographer looking to pivot <laughs> into newborn photos, this video is for you. Okay, so first things first, if you are wanting to get into newborn photography, the first thing you're gonna need is a camera. Now I shoot right now with the Canon um, R6, the mirrorless R6, and I love it. However, I just recently switched over to mirrorless. Um, I had been shooting with a Canon Mark III and four full frame cameras for a while, and I love them and I swear by them. And so if you are wanting to get started, um, I recommend go ahead and getting a full frame camera um, and not a crop sensor if you can afford it. Um, it is a big jump in investment, but you will notice a huge difference in your images. So start with a great body and then skip the kit lenses. Don't purchase a, um, a camera that comes with all these different lenses. You want to just get the individual body and then purchase individual lenses based on your needs. My favorite lens to start out with that I recommend to a lot of people is the 50 millimeter. Now the 50 millimeter comes in a different, a couple different apertures. Um, you can get the 1.2 or you can get the 1.8. The 1.8 is around hundred dollars. And so I absolutely recommend that if you are, um, balling on a budget and you're wanting to get started, I actually shot with that particular 50 millimeter up until last year. So the first, six years of my business, I shot every wedding, um, every session, I used that $100 lens. And so it doesn't matter how expensive of gear you have, as long as you know how to use it and you use it well, then you can create some beautiful images for your clients. Aside from the 50 millimeter, I have a 100 millimeter, which quite honestly, I don't use that often. I bought it for weddings um, and I use it every so often with newborns. And then I have a 35 millimeter. Um, which I also love, but it can be expensive. So if you had to start somewhere, I would recommend starting with the 50 and then working up from there. Um, I know a lot of newborn photographers that love the 24 to 70. Um, I had it years ago when I shot weddings and then sold it uh, because I just noticed a lot of distortion in my images. And then I purchased the 35 um, to kind of make up for that. But like I said, the 50 millimeter rarely comes off my camera when I'm shooting sessions anyway. So if you've got to start somewhere, that is a great place to start. When it comes to newborns, there's a couple things that you need to think about. The first thing is swaddles. Um, I love Jersey or Rayon swaddles that are, have a lot of stretch to them. And so if you are looking for just a basic everyday square swaddle, I love the copper and pearl brand. Um, they are soft. They're real stretchy. Um, you don't have to iron them, but they have a lot of give to them. And so if you were just getting started learning how to wrap babies, ditch the muslin swaddles and go with something that's got some stretch to it. You're going to be so much happier with the result. Things are going to look a lot cleaner. It's going to be a lot simpler to actually wrap the baby. Um, and you're just going to be overall very pleased with the outcome. If you're wanting to take it a next, a next step further, and an upgrade from the square swaddle, you can get the long um, stretchy swaddles that I have referred to in a lot of my other videos, and I'll show you one of those here. Um, basically, these swaddles are a long strip of fabric that you can use to wrap baby in, um, not in a traditional way, but in a more um, stylized way. So if you're wanting to do more of the lifestyle session, I would recommend starting with the square wrap getting your grounds good on that, and then converting over to the long wraps where you can actually practice different ways to wrap baby um, other than the traditional like burrito swaddle. If you have a space to store it, I recommend getting a newborn bean bag. They're absolutely not required by any means, but they are super helpful when it comes to having 
an individual space to place babies safely for their photos. So this beanbag right here I've had for several years now. Um, I purchased it off Amazon and I will link that in the description below. But this guy is filled with those little beanbag pellets. Um, super simple, super lightweight, but it's really great to just set down and um, to put your blankets over and position baby in. Um, this is a small size. I would recommend that if you're going to travel to people's homes, it's a lot easier to lug around. But again, it's not required. If you are thinking that you don't have the place to store that or you just really don't want to mess with that, there are other options. Um, using a bed is a great option um, or using a baby play mat. And so this little guy right here, it's got a solid side, it's got a patterned side, but I got this at TJ Maxx for like $15 or less. And so you can find some really great solid color baby play mats that are soft, they have enough cushion on them, so that if you want to put baby on that, that is totally an option. Um, another thing to think about are blankets. And so I recommend if you're starting out, whether it comes to swaddles or blankets or bows or bonnets or anything, to start with white um, for a couple reasons. White is really simple to edit. It's clean, it's timeless, it's classic, it's pure. It can be gender neutral, whether you're photographing baby boy or baby girl, um, but it cuts down on the cost of having to buy so many different colors and styles of swaddles and blankets. So start with white, and if you want to add colors after that, I would start with other neutrals and then move to the most popular colors like blues and pinks and greens and yellows um, and then go from there. But honestly, very, very, very rarely do I ever photograph babies other than white and it's only if a client requests it. Something else that is an absolute must with newborn photography is a harness or strap. So this guy right here I've had for several years. I um, got it when I shot weddings but anything that you can use to tether your camera to your body while you're photographing newborns is a necessity to keep baby safe and protected from any injuries if your camera should happen to fall out of your hands. So absolute must, make sure you have one of these. Something else that I like to have in my bag when I'm traveling for newborn sessions or something I have in the studio is white noise. So whether you have a baby shusher or you have a white noise machine or you just play it off of your phone, having some sort of background noise during your session is gonna be really soothing to baby and it's gonna help your session run a lot smoother. Something else that I really recommend is having a heat source. Um, babies, when you're taking all their clothes off and then getting them swaddled, they can get a little fussy. Um, and so I like to create a nice warm environment for baby during those transitions. And so I have two different kinds of heaters that I use depending on if I'm doing a studio session or an in-home session. One of them is just your standard plug in the wall um, with a long cord space heater that's, I don't know, about that big. And then I have a direct plug-in wall heater that is um, a, about this big, and it just attaches right to the wall. Um, and so I typically use that one in studio because I know how close I need to be to the light and I know where my outlet is. But if I'm going to someone's home and I'm doing an in-home session or a session somewhere else, I make sure that I bring the one with the cord so that I can, um, if there's not an outlet right next to a window, I still have that cord that I can pull close to the um, the baby, whether they're on the pillow or on a bed or wherever I have put them. Something else you're gonna wanna make sure that you have on hand is a reflector. When you are putting baby down on the pillow or on a bed, you're gonna have some shadows falling on the other side of their face. So to make sure that you have even tones and even light throughout the entire um, session and throughout baby's face and body, you're gonna use a reflector. So you can get one of the traditional reflectors like this off of Amazon or B&H Photo or wherever you get um, your camera supplies. But um, I, I put this in my bag if I'm traveling. But if I'm in the studio, I have created my own special little V-flat. A um, Couple reasons. One, that's kind of a pain to hold while in photographing baby. Um, they make some with handles, but even still, if you have one hand here and then you're photographing over, it can just feel like you're juggling a lot of things and then when you have to soothe baby, you have to put your camera down and, and put the um, reflector down and I just feel like it's way too much. So I will use that if I'm doing an in-home session and I have to travel, but if I'm in the studio, 
I have this guy right here. And this is um, just a homemade V flat that I made and it is an incredible light box. And so what I do is I put baby down here on their pillow and then I push all of this towards the light. And so the light is gonna bounce off of these guys and onto baby. Um, this project in total, I think was around $30, maybe like between 30 and 35. Um, I just got two giant pieces of foam board from Hobby Lobby in their framing section. And you have to ask the framing department. They don't sell them on the floor. You just have to go back and ask for, I think they're 40 by 60 um, foam board. So ask for them. They're around 15 or $16. And then I just taped the crease so then I can fold it. So I would recommend having some sort of way to reflect light um, so to ensure that the lighting is even on baby, especially when you're photographing from above. Some other things I like to have on hand when I'm going to newborn sessions um, that are just little asides is some burp cloths. Um, I either use those if baby is spitting up or if I need to use it underneath their bottom or their head to adjust when I'm positioning them on the newborn pillow or on a bed. Um, so I have burp cloths or, um, like other little swaddles, um, or washcloths on hand. Um, hand sanitizer is another very important thing. I do wash my hands, um, at the beginning of the session and then in between diaper changes. But if you feel like you just need to have a, an extra quick wipe off, hand sanitizer is great to have on hand. Um, and then if you wanted to bring any accessories. And so normally I provide bows for um, my baby girls. And so I have a variety of just little petite white bows. Um, again, if you start neutral, you can always build up, but neutral is a great place to start because it works with any style um, in any home. So you gotta think about your clients and where they're gonna put these images. And so if it's white, it's gonna match whatever decor they have in their house or their nursery. So all of those things go in my bag and then I have my backup batteries, my SD cards, um, and all of those things ready and on hand. Um, I also bring a pack of wipes in case I need them. And I have some newborn diapers on hand in the studio in case I need them. But if I'm at someone's home, um, I don't typically bring extra diapers with me. So I hope this video was helpful. If you are looking to dive into newborn photography and you're just curious of, you know, what are the things that you need that are, that are kind of essential to getting started? Um, if you are a newborn photographer and you think I left something out, I would love to hear your thoughts below. Um, or if you are getting into newborn photography, comment down below some of the things that you were surprised that you might need. I hope this video was helpful and I will see you next week.